Good day everyone, my name is Lisa Ben Rapon Andrade, a second year Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in Mathematics student. And today I am here to tackle Unit 2, Basis and Policies of Special and Inclusive Education and the Psychological Base of Lee Vygotsky's Scaffolding. What is scaffolding? Scaffolding is a method of teaching in which a teacher gives each student's individualized support by gradually making it easier for them to build on previous knowledge. Across all ages and grade levels, scaffolding can be utilized in a wide range of subject areas. Vygotsky's social learning theory, in which he described the zone of proximal development, is generally credited with providing a theoretical foundation for education. Scaffolding is a special kind of support that helps students learn new skills, concepts, or understanding. In fact, Vygotsky never used the term scaffolding himself. Jerome Brunner, David Wood, and Gail Rooks introduced it for the first time in 1976 while incorporating Vygotsky's zone of proximal development into a variety of educational settings. The process of teachers modeling or demonstrating how to use a problem and then taking a step back to provide students with support as needed is referred to as scaffolding. It mostly has three characteristics. Fading, where support is provided only when the extent is needed. The second characteristic is temporary, where support is reduced and removed as the learner gains competency and is able to answer and solve problems on their own. And lastly, the transfer of responsibility, where responsibility for successful performance is gradually transferred from the support provided to the learners. Purpose of scaffolding. Since every teacher almost certainly employs a variety of instructional scaffolding in their work, scaffolding is widely regarded as an essential component of effective teaching. Additionally, Learning gaps, the gap between what students have learned and what they are expected to know and be able to do at a particular point in their education are frequently filled with scaffolding. When student attempts a difficult task without receiving the assistance, direction, or understanding they require to complete it, they may experience negative emotion and self-perception. This is one of the primary objectives of scaffolding. The first objective of scaffolding is cognitive structuring. It means it provides explanatory and value structure, such as mental models, schema that organize and justify. The second one is reduction in degree of freedom. It means taking over those parts of a task that the student is not yet able to perform or breaking into smaller steps. Then, direct maintenance, keeping the learner and the learning focus on specific goals. And the fourth one is metacognitive coaching. It means helping learners identify and modify their learning and problem-solving strategy. Then, the next one is recruitment, getting the learner interested in a task and help, helping adhere to the requirements of the task. And this next is contingency management. Facilitating learning using rewards as well as keep students motivated by it. There are four types of scaffolding. To accommodate a variety of knowledge levels, instructors can employ a variety of scaffolds. In order for the student to master new material, the learning context may necessitate the use of multiple scaffolding strategies. Instructor must adjust their scaffolding to accommodate this new learning medium when instructing students who are not physically present in the classroom. Finding a way to modify the verbal and visual components of scaffolding to create a successful interactive and collaborative distant learning environment can be challenging. Hypermedia, hypertext, collaborative learning 
environments and web-based learning environments are now available in the educational setting thanks to the recent prolification of technology the first type of scaffolding is procedural scaffolding procedural scaffolding teaches students how to use the right tools and resources in an efficient manner in addition it helps students learn how to use the course environment and participate in learning activities because there aren't any standard design templates students have to know how the course works and how to get around an example of this is course overview syllabus assignment and due dates and also grading system the second scaffolding strategy is conceptual scaffolding the learner is guided to key concepts and assisted in deciding what to consider when learning the learner is guided by conceptual scaffolding about what to keep in mind as they learn utilizing knowledge maps to scaffold learning is one strategy and there are many benefits of using knowledge map example of this is reducing cognitive loads facilitating the representation of relationship facilitating higher order learning analysis synthesis evaluation and providing many paths for knowledge retrieval and also supporting the communication of knowledge. The third type of scaffolding is strategic scaffolding. Strategic scaffolding assists students in locating alternative approaches and strategies for evolving difficult problems. It places an emphasis on alternative learning paths and individualized instruction to help each student. In addition, strategic scaffolding necessitates knowledge of learners' individual learning style and levels of prior knowledge. In addition, in strategy for simplifying and organizing information may be required for this kind of scaffolding, as does frequent communication with students. An example of this is alternative explanation and hints. The last type of scaffolding is metacognitive scaffolding. What is metacognitive scaffolding? Metacognitive scaffolding supports the learner's ability to manage their learning and developing their thinking. Throughout the process, this scaffolding encourages students to consider what they are learning and helps them reflect on what they have learned. Self-assessment. This is the most prevalent area of research and is thought to enhance students' capacity for pre-planning and higher order thinking. Metacognitive scaffolding can be broken down into categories that help students use metacognition in the classroom. The first part is planning scaffolds. Establishment of learning goals, planning to achieve goals, development of strategies for effective learning and management. And the second step is monitoring scaffolds. Tracking learner's progress, monitoring potential outcomes, and the last part is evaluation scaffolds. Based on the learning results of planning and monitoring methods, allow learners opportunity to determine effective or non-effective process. Results may be required revising or modifying learner strategies. An example of an example of metacognitive scaffold is planning learning outcomes, monitoring documents, and evaluating rubrics. Scaffolding is an effective instructional strategy because it helps students overcome their weaknesses by providing them with assistance beyond what they are capable at that moment. 
it also helps students, I mean teachers, engage in higher order thinking activities by encouraging students to think about how and why they solve problems rather than just memorizing information without understanding it fully. In addition, scaffolding the instruction has been shown to improve students' achievements more effectively than traditional instruction, as what Carp Carpenter and Oaks 1996 won.